have victory over your enemy on three, be loud about it. One, two, three. <laughs> Scream it out, have fun, laugh hard, enjoy today. Hey, we want to welcome those that are visiting us uh, online. They're watching us, podcast, vidcast, whatever that is. Give them a big hand clap. I know Heath, my son, in Nebraska, you watch me every week. Scotty looks tall, doesn't he? I look very tall on the little screen. So a uh, husband and a, a father, he goes uh, uh, over to Europe for a business trip for about 10 days and, you know, calling home and stuff. And on the seventh day, he had called home and his teenage son had answered the phone and uh, they were talking, you know, about just what's going on. And finally, the dad said, oh, yeah, my do- how's my dog? What's, go- what's going on with my dog? You know, I haven't seen my dog in seven days. And the son said, well, dog uh, got out, ran away, gone for- it's gone. That dog is not coming back. And the dad just, like, his heart dropped, and, but now he was just greatly annoyed. He was son, and he said, son, you, you got to learn some tact. I know you're young, but you, there's some tact. Now, I have to bear the weight of this for the next three days over here in Europe before I can come home. He said, you got to find a better way to say some things, to break bad news. He said, all you had to say today is say, hey, dad, uh, uh, she got out, and uh, I, I think she's over at the neighbor's house, but, but we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to find her. And then tomorrow, go, hey, I went over to the neighbor's house, and uh, she wasn't there, but, but the neighbors think that she's kind of around the neighborhood. I'm going to keep looking. And the next day, you know, well, she's at the pound, I believe. We're going to go to the pound. And then when I landed, then you could drop the bad news and say, hey, she's gone forever. And I said, would it help me kind of tactfully get through that? Do you understand? The son said, I understand. I said, that's fine. Hey, can I talk to your mother? Son paused for a moment and said, she got out, and she's over at the neighbor's house, I believe. (laughs) 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 Open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 2.11. We continue our series on your big old assumptions in life. That your assumptions, just like grandfather said, and most of you have heard it over your lifetime, that when you assume, you become a burrow, you become a donkey in life. And how it is so true that in our own lives, how many assumptions we have. We have assumptions about what relationships are to be. We have assumptions about what our life can become. Assumptions about what we can do and what we can have and what we can experience. And what we find out in life, oftentimes most of our assumptions, if not all, are limiting assumptions. They're assumptions that put a ceiling on our day and on our life. But my Bible says there is no ceiling. That you have a breakthrough type of God that wants to have you live a limitless life. And we need to break out those assumptions and get more truth inside of us that are guiding and directing our lives than our big old donkey that keeps holding us back in our day, our week, and our life. And so it's all about getting the truth in because the truth will set you free. But your big old assumptions will limit you. This story just happened this morning. And so enjoy is all I can say about this. But a little backstory on me. When I'm going over my sermon throughout the week, whether it's in the car or getting ready or wherever I'm at, just like you, my subconscious takes over of the normal day-to-day tasks. I go on autopilot in a sense. Now, I don't know about you, but my autopilot is not that good. I don't know if your autopilot's good, mine's not good. So if I'm going over to my sermon in the car while I'm driving, my autopilot can change lanes, it can drive, but my autopilot can't seem to get me home. My autopilot will drive me halfway to Payson before I realize... Right? Or it'll drive me to, to, to my last house. And so my autopilot is not a good autopilot, yet it can do the, the basic functions. So this morning I get up and I'm going over my, uh, my sermon in my mind. And I'm going over the teachings. And I'm kind of autopilot, you know, getting the hair all, all washed and get out and drying the hair. And as I get out, my amazing wife of 23 years decides she wants to have a theological discussion uh, about Timothy and Paul. And so she began to ask from this book that she's reading about mansions and something else. And as a simple man that you know I am, how many things can I do at one time? I can only do one. That's all I can do. So I have an inner battle. And on top of that, my, 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 my subconscious is also trying to do three things. He can't do one thing good. So I'm trying to get my hair done. I'm trying to go over my sermon. And I'm trying to set myself up to get lucky at some point this way, right? And so I'm doing a lot of things. Sorry. Yes. I'm just being honest here. And so I'm trying to do all three, but I'm doing none of them very good whatsoever. 
And so I, I hair dry, I got the, the blow dryer on, and so now I got a little time, I'm just going over my sermon, right, turn it off, and boom, we're right back talking about Timothy, the mansions, and everything else. And, and, and so then I, now it's time to put my, my style cream in my hair, and so I, I get the, oh, creamed up, there you go, and I start to do the hair. And then I notice it's just not working the way that it normally does. Like, it's just weird and how it's doing it. It, it didn't, and then it doesn't have the super cool style and smell that it has. And then I looked down and I, I saw, uh, they're going to show you a picture here. All right, my styling cream's on the left, and then on the right is diaper rash cream. <laughs> Am I, am I telling the truth? It does. It's super smooth. It feels so good. So tingly. I know you have questions as I have questions. And I can tell you, I don't have a lot of answers for you today. Why is there diaper rash cream even by my hair cream? That's nothing that I want to talk about at this point in our day. But your big old assumption cream gets into your life. And you assume that it's going to make it look good. And it doesn't work the way that it should. When you put assumptions in relationships, when you put assumptions in your finances, when you put assumptions in any area of life, it doesn't turn out the way the manufacturer designed it to turn out when you use it wrong. And so we're going to get some, come on, somebody out there. We got, you can laugh. Somebody called me donkey head today. That's fine. All right, 2 Corinthians 2.11. Today we're going to talk about the most dangerous assumptions uh, that are out there, I believe. It is where the enemy lives. This is the ones that he really works his efforts and his times toward. Great general, I believe it was MacArthur, had said that if you know where the enemy is going to be attacking, you know where the enemy is going to be attacking and how the enemy is going to be attacking, it's nearly impossible for you to lose the battle or the war. And so today we're going to start off with me telling you how the enemy attacks, how the enemy works. And if you know that, and you know his devices, and you know his ways, then it becomes so much easier for you and I to put up our defenses or at least make sure that we don't put ourselves in the place where the enemy can, can get in there and mess up everything. Should be nearly impossible for us to lose the battle. Here we see in 2 Corinthians Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. Once again, we're not ignorant. We don't want to be ignorant of how he works, of his traps and his snares. And then you can read up on your own earlier, just right above that, they're talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, resentment is the enemy's device. It's the cancer of the soul is what it is. You know, everything out here we can see coming for the most part. But when we allow anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment to be a part of the inside of us, it is a cancer that eats our life away from the inside out. And it's such a slow transition that we don't realize that we went from being kind of happy and enjoying life to miserable and not enjoying life. That the peace that we once had was slowly diminished in such a manner that we don't even remember really what peace is. We don't remember what real happiness is, what real joy is, because it's such a slow transition or a cancer of the soul. If a doctor told you, hey, I can give you, I'd like to put some cancer inside of you, there's not a person to say, no, I, no thank you. I would rather not have that. Yet, yeah, come on. You got, I don't even know what you yeah, did. Right? Yet, how often do we accept the cancer of the soul inside of us and allow it to remain in us? You can give the Lord a hand clap there. That's a good place for it. And so today we're going to talk about ways in which it gets in there, ways most importantly to get away from it or get it out of us because I want to have a little chemotherapy of the soul today where we get all of it out and we begin to operate in the love of Jesus Christ in every area of life. I'm going to give you the most dangerous assumptions. Now normally 
when I teach, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll do point one, then I'll go to point two, point three, all throughout it. But, but today is kind of exciting for those of you who are a little melancholy. I'm going to give you all six up front, and then we're going to teach. And so I encourage you, as we find out any time I do a, a sermon or a teaching on, on bitterness and this stuff, that it affects all of us. And so I, I really encourage you to take some great notes today. Number one, six of the biggest, uh, most dangerous assumptions that we do is, Number one is all hurt is intentional. This is an assumption. We have a subconscious assumption that all hurt is intentional. That everything that negative happens to us, that somehow people were planning to do it. Somebody said something to you, it hurt your feelings, and we respond in such a way to life or allow things in us as if it was intentional. As if they meant to do it. But in our own lives, how many times have you said something, later found out that somebody got their feelings hurt, and you're like, but that's not what I meant. Right. I, I didn't mean that. Most of the time we do that. See, we have to realize, see, we think that everybody is thinking about us, but that's not true because you're not even thinking about others. You're just thinking about yourself, thinking about others and wondering what they're thinking about you, but they're not thinking about you. They're just thinking about what you're thinking about them, and nobody's thinking about anybody else but everybody else. And so you see that we live, you can't, just, I'm just giving you facts, we live in a, in a selfish world where everybody is trying to make their life great, and they're all concerned Amen. about themselves. So when somebody cuts you off on the road, most of the time they didn't mean it, but we respond in such a manner to say that, why would you do that to me? Why are you such a donkey? Why are you such a jerk, right? Why are you, right? And so we respond as if it's intentional, yet most of the time, if not all of the time, people just want to have a good life. People don't want to hurt you. People don't want to be mean to you. It just happens in life. And when I can get rid of that assumptions, I can then begin to go forward and how I react and respond when I know it's just an accident. Because how many times in a marriage or even boyfriend-girlfriend type of relationship do we say something, man, and we didn't mean it the way that it came out? Right, I got some amens and then, oh, Lord, I just got saved. Praise the Lord on that one. Right. If I, there's so many times I'll say it. And as I'm saying it, I go, nope, that wasn't good. I wish I could have a mulligan. I need a do-over. I wish, I, I wish it was like a movie where the director would go, and cut. All right, Scott, here we go. We're going to do this scene one more time. You're going to pretend you're a loving, caring husband that wants to get lucky tonight. All right, that's your motivation. And action. Right? And I would nail it the second time every single time. But I can't get it the first time, right? How many times do we say something? We respond in a way. Ladies respond in a certain way or this or that. And then it blows up into a huge fight or argument where neither person really meant for it to get this out of control. It was just two people thinking that the subconsciously the other person was doing things intentional and we were just trying to get out of a battle. I wish before marriage battles, I wish there was a recording that had to be played. And it was like the Miranda rights that said, you have the right to be silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. This, record, this conversation is being recorded in our subconscious for quality assurance purposes. Well, we do. We think it's intentional, but when you begin to realize that it wasn't intentional, that they really tr wasn't trying to be hurtful, that it just, just people just are people. Then it can help you. Oh, we're going to have a whole mess of those right now. Here it comes. Ready? Get ready for it. Here it comes. Thank you, Lord, for it. See, God brings joy wherever I go. I want you to know that. He does. That's fun to me. It's a, something that you will remember. We had a warning. I don't know if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably get one, too. Yeah, see, the iPhone does it really better than the droid. No, 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 number two. All right, number two. You guys are so fun today. I love this. All right, number two. Anger, bitterness, unforgiveness is not dangerous. We may know that on the outside. You can even ask a seven-year-old. They're like, no, you don't want to have any of that stuff. You need to get rid of it. Seven-year-olds know that. And I know on the outside we know that. Yet we don't respond to it in the, uh, in the way that we know that subconsciously we believe that. Because if subconsciously you really believe that, then you would be all over anytime something 
was in there that wasn't right, if you really believed it, and that's where we got to get rid of that assumptions because we have assumptions that it's okay, and we have assumptions that it's all right, and we have assumptions that, that it's not going to do that much damage. But like I said earlier, we wouldn't take a drop of cancer being put inside of us. Why would I take a drop of unforgiveness to be, remain inside of my soul? That's right. Come on, you can be louder today. Come on, somebody out there. All right. Number three. It's okay to just vent my feelings when I feel like it. Come on, we watch television, we just see how that is. Just vent them feelings. And I can do that. I get into that. I do. There's times that I vent my feelings. I'm trying to get a whole lot better. I'm, I feel like I'm making a lot of progress. But I want for you also in your life to know that just because that, that you watch something on television that they, they show you that, that that isn't the right way to deal with things in life, that there's multiple ways to say things. I can go off on you and I can vent everything and just, ooh, I feel better, but the relationship didn't become better. Or I can take the time, process my thoughts, carefully come to you and say the same thing in a different way and get a great result. See, it's about the results. There's like 28 of you wanting to clap all the time. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap. If we're going to clap, let's clap. Hey, right, watch the scripture here. I'm going to do a, I know, uh, Betsy, stay with me. I know that I went to a little bit different of a scripture on that one, but I want to do Proverbs 29, 11. Hit Proverbs 29, 11 for me. A fool, somebody say fool. Fool. Vents all his feelings, but a wise man pulls him back. A fool, a fool just lets it out. Blah, blah. And your boss, blah. And your spouse, blah. That's what a fool does, right? But a wise person is somebody who's able to contain them, right? Put them together, put them into good thoughts, and then boom. You know, even with our own kids, we don't like when our kids go, blah. We're like, hey, you could have said that differently. And then we go, blah, over here just three minutes later. It's like we could do the same things that we're teaching in areas of our life, and it wouldn't diminish our relationships, but it would enhance our relationship. I'm not saying that we don't have a right to say when somebody bugs us. I'm just saying change the way in which you do it. Right. Changing the way that you present it right. is a wise person, is somebody who enhances the relationship. A fool is somebody who just went, boom. Number three, four. Four, sir. Number four is there are times unforgiveness is okay. Once again, it's a subconscious assumption that we make excuses. Well, Pastor, you don't know what they did. You don't know what my past is like. You don't know. And so let me hold on to this in here. And we assume, even if we really thought about it, we know it's not right to, but we assume that it's okay to hold on to it. And so we've been holding on to some things for a year, five years, ten years. Now we get into decades. People have been holding on to things since they, they were 9, 10, 11 years old, and they just keep holding on to it. And Jesus said to forgive. You know, you won't find a place in the Bible that it says forgive unless they do this. You'll never find that. You always see forgive, forgive, <laughs> forgive, forgive. Forgive for whatever in life is to forgive. So it doesn't help you to hold on to it. Number five. Number five is, well, I need time to give over it. And I believe this is true. And the Bible actually gives you a timer. That's what I like. The Bible has the answers to everything, I believe. And so the Bible says, I get it. People are going to do some things. You're going to have some anger. And so God says, let me give you a timer. You know, when Betty Crocker gives me a timer on my cake, and I'm cooking a cake in the oven, I set the timer. What happens if I leave the cake past the timer? I burn it. I, I mess it up. Now, now, I had to cook it. I get that. But if I leave it in too long, I destroy it. So same thing for you. Understand this. God gives you a timer. If I go past the timer, then I begin to burn things in my life until I get to the point where I destroy things. Here's your timer. Put it up there. Ready? Ephesians 4, 26, 27. says, in your anger, don't sin. So he even tells you how to bake your cake. He's like, hey, you're going to get mad. But here, you got to process this thing right. How you deal with it is right. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So he's telling you right there, there's your time. You got a timer on it. As soon as the sun's going down, I need to make sure that I get rid of it. Or I, once again, here we go, the device of the devil. Because he wants to get a foothold. You know, as a kid, there was times me and Jason be having a good time. And there was times he would annoy me and I want to beat him. And so as a kid... I would just off and I would chase him. He had what's called a fortress of solitude. It was what you would refer to as a bathroom. And so he would run to the bathroom, close and lock the door, and I could not get into the bathroom. But every once in a while, I was fast enough and quick enough, and I could get my 
foot in the door before he closed it, which means a beating is coming. And I like it, right? I didn't have to get my whole body in. I didn't have to get in. I just had to get a foot. And the same thing, the enemy knows he don't have to get all up in your business. He just needs to get a foot hold in your life. If I can get a foothold in there, I can bring a whole bunch of junk into your life. And how important is it that every night when we go to bed that we have a reset, we have a cleansing, we have no unforgiveness, no anger, no bitterness, no resentment inside of us, but we have, we start our day off fresh and new. I got, as we're using our burros and donkeys, isn't he cute? He's a, he's a mini burrow. He's a mini little donkey. Now, these are going to uh, uh, represent our assumptions in life, but I really want them to resent, uh, represent our offenses that happen in life. You know, every time that something happens in our day or week, somebody cuts you off, somebody says something rude, boss does this, wife does that, husband does this, there's a moment where the cute little donkey shows up. You have the opportunity at this moment to shoo the donkey away or let the donkey in. We all have that. There were times early on when you were dating her and she would say something or he would say something and the donkey show up and you're like, I just love him. He's just got such pretty hair. And the donkey goes way away. The donkey never showed up. But now we've been married 12 years. Come on in, my little friends. <laughs> and we take the little donkey, you showed up for work for the very first time, and you're so excited about your job, and the boss said something, blah, 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 and no big deal, I don't want the donkey. But now I've been working there six years, and that lazy good-for-nothing wants to open his mouth to me, come on in, my little friends. <laughs> and I allow the little burrow on the inside, I allow the offense to come on in. Now, what I'm going to explain to you right now is no more than God who loves to just make me smile. Did you know that God, God does things every day for me to bring a smile. We joke around. We have fun. That's my I don't know what your relationship is with God. That's my relationship. He jokes with me. He sends me fun stuff. I, and people that drive with me now are starting to see because I pointed out on the road. It'll be, I think they're angels. Like there, there was a day about six months ago I'm driving down the road and there was a clown on a bicycle with no shirt on. I said, that's from God. God wanted to bring me a smile. That's the only way. You can't explain that. That's an angel on a bike right now. God sent down to bring me a smile. It happens almost every day. Something will happen. Yesterday, God had a joke for me, and I believe he's been planning it almost 6,000 years. That's, how, that's a good joke when you plan ahead to put one together. So I'm going over this teaching in my mind yesterday, and I got to a point where I wanted to talk about what a herd uh, of donkeys are. And so I'm like, is it a gaggle? Is it a herd? What, what is it? And so I look it up on Google, and you can do this, and a herd of donkeys is called a baron. All right, cool, that's great. But then in the, the thing, it said what a baby little donkey is. And I don't know if you know what this is. I didn't know it, but it made me laugh out loud. He is called a hiney. <laughs> I screamed out to God. I said, you are a great God to me all the time. You have given me a gift. So today's title is, is Don't Touch the Heine. That is the title of today's sermon. Can I get an amen out there anywhere? Because every day, every place that you go, they're trying to get you the little Heine into your life, and we got to shoo the Heine away and not take the Heine and touch the Heine. Can I get an amen anywhere out there? Here's the thing about the little burrow. This is the thing about this little guy, is that when you take him in, for whatever reason, they like to attract other ones. They're, very, they, they're like a magnet. And as soon as I get one, so you come into work, and, and the boss says, hey, you were a couple minutes late today. Little Heine shows up, and you think to yourself, are you kidding me? You're late all the time. You're gonna, you're gonna tell me I'm two minutes late one time in five years, and you know, and then you all of a sudden now I begin to look around, and so and so was late. Oh my God! And now you're over there talking at the water cooler with Joe for a half an hour while I'm working my my hiney off, right? And, and you take an extra long lunch, right? And here I go. I'm attracting all the little burrows, little hineys, all piling up on the inside yes. of me. 
weighing me down, and a job that I loved four years ago that was a gift from God, I began to resent and hate until either I quit or I get dismissed, and I wonder why, God, did I lose another job? It's because you're hiney. <laughs> Come on, somebody out there. It's this little burrow right here. Now, I want you to understand also what these little burrows do. And if you've ever been around a donkey, most of them probably not. They have a video clip that they want. The noise that a donkey makes. And I want to give you a picture of what this does on the inside of you. Throw that <laughs> That. This is what's going on on the inside of you. You grab one of these, you think it's innocent, it's cute, it's a little thing, and it's another, it feels good too. Doesn't it have a little, little, little bit of this, little burrow on the inside of you, and a feeling you're going over your mind, they did this and that. And what happens is you lose your clarity of thought because that is wrong. That's the only thing you can hear. You can't think clear. You can't think about your job. You can't think about nothing else. Your spouse said something. It made you grab a hold of this. You can't think about the night. All you can think about your responses. This demands all of your attention. And it makes you do a whole lot of crazy. Anybody ever do anything crazy when they're mad? Right? I'd be praising God in the car. And so, so, some 83-year-old cuts me off. I whip around them. I'm showing them Jesus number one. I'm like, huh? And then I, go, then I get right back into prayer. Thank you, Lord. Right? And I'm... And then the guy goes, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, my God, that's crazy. That's that donkey. It can happen so quick. Get inside of you. You do some crazy things in your relationship. Holly, my amazing wife of 23 years, a few things that I do. I don't do a lot of annoying things. At least that's my perception of myself. But I do so. She hates when I cook, in a sense. Like, not that I cook. But if I have to season anything, like I'm like, hey, I'm cooking spaghetti. She's like, oh, please don't. Because the way she describes it, when I season food, I guess she thinks I go like this and just lay, and I'm just tossing seasoning because it gets all over the place. And I agree. She's 100% right. When I look down, she's like, look. And I'm like, oh, how'd the seasoning get everywhere? Like it's all over the place. She also hates maple syrup with everything in her heart. I don't know where it came from. I, she hates the smell, the, te the texture, everything, which then takes away one of the love of my life, which is the waffle. I love the waffle with most of my heart. <laughs> So we found out early on, and she hates the, just the smell so bad. We went over to Jason's house to pick him up to do something. We walked in, and they had had waffles that day. And she just walked out and said, hey, tell Jason I'm in the car. I'm not coming in. She cannot handle the smell of the maple syrup. So over the years, I haven't done a whole lot of waffling unless she's gone on a trip or something. I'll, I'll, I'll make a waffle for the kids, and we'll enjoy the waffle when she's gone. And then we clean up all of the evidence, and that's what we do. But what's interesting about this story is she had... My amazing mother-in-law for Christmas, get me a waffle maker. Makes no sense, does it? Give me something that's going to annoy you. And so, and it's a great waffle maker. It's one of the pro ones, flips upside down, makes the perfect waffles. So a few months later, after I got the waffle maker, I was like, you know what, I want to have waffles. I had some time in the morning. I'm like, I'm going to make some waffles with my new waffle maker. It's not nice not to use a gift. And so I'm getting ready to make the waffles, and here comes... Uh, my amazing wife, and she sees what I'm doing, and she goes, uh-uh, nope. <laughs> he's right here. And I looked at her, and I'm like, what? And he was here. He's still cute. I didn't want him yet. She goes, no, we're not, we're not doing waffles. We're not doing this whole mess thing. We're not doing any of this. And then she kind of looked at me, and she goes, and you don't need a waffle anyway, like that. Oh. Come on in. No. No. I love you and you're going to stay with me for a little while. You're my new little buddy. I took him in to the very part of my soul. And I looked at her. And I didn't do problems very well at this moment. I said, I'm a grown A man. I'm a grown donkey man is what I am. In my lifetime, nobody's going to ever tell me what to eat. I'll eat whatever I want to eat, whenever I want to eat it. And to prove that to you, I'm going to have waffles every morning for the rest of my life. That's what I'm going to do. Every morning. 
For the next three months, I had a waffle. I made one every day, and she just walked away, and she said, fine, whatever, and she just smiled and took it. Every day I had a waffle, every morning. <coughs> I would mix it all up. I bought the biggest maple syrup that they had. I was in this for the long haul. I was teaching everybody in life a lesson of who I was. The donkey was loud. He was making me doing a little irrational things. Three months later, I had gained, for the first time in my life, 25 pounds. <laughs> It's a true story. I put 25 pounds. Look at the video from last year. He's no bueno. It's all wide shots on Scotty. My little burrow had turned into a big, big donkey in my life. Made me do crazy, crazy. I had to, to die in three months with no sugar whatsoever to get rid of it. My Lord, that's a lot of work for some waffles in my life. Do you see? How a little burrow, just a little guy could get inside of you and make you do some crazy things. Make you set in. Because you know a donkey's stubborn. Them thoughts get in there and they get stubborn. They, they won't move. And I'm going to have waffles every day. And I'm going to teach her a lesson every morning. I smell like waffle. Everything, right? Everything about I sweat maple syrup. Everything smelled like maple syrup in my life. But I'm teaching a lesson. And we do that in relation, in life. That, and you know, when they're small, they're easy to move. And I want you to see that. They're easy to move when they're small. But as a donkey grows, because you didn't take it off the timer, and you went to bed with it, and you kept feeding it, and, and loving on it, and you kept talking about it, you kept reminding it, well, they said this, and I should have said that, and I should have done that. And you just keep doing it. Before long now, you got yourself a big old burrow that you're hanging around with you, right? Everywhere you go, you got this. And you wonder why you feel tired. You wonder why you can't do what you used to be able to do. You wonder why you feel oppressed in a sense and, and a heaviness about your spirit and about your day. And you get exhausted very easily. It's because you're carrying something you weren't designed to carry. You were designed to carry the love of Jesus Christ on the inside of you. You weren't designed to have a big old burrow. Dragging you and holding you down. Keeping you from what God wants you to have in your life. And so you've been taking it to bed. It's interesting because you talk about a newly married couple and, and, and they, got, they don't have any of this much. And so they don't seem to fight and, and, and have the arguments. But now you go 10 years down the road, right? And, and if you've taken enough burrows in, you got enough of these on the inside and they've grown up. Everything about the person that you used to love now annoys you. Same person, same stuff. Yet the burrows are making you crazy. You come in, and she's like, hi, hon. And it's just the sound of her voice. <laughs> it's the same voice that you fell in love with 18 years ago, but now it sounds like a cat being ran over. And you're like, for the love. What you doing, hon? You're like, oh, my gosh, what are you doing? And he comes over, and he embraces you with, with uh, the same arms that he used to hug you with, and you used to snuggle up and used to love them. But now all you can think is he smells like old milk and cheese. Why? Why? And then he comes and gives you a little kiss on the cheek, and all you can think to yourself is, how much saliva does his mouth produce? It's so wet. It's like a St. Bernard licked my face. Come on, Beethoven, do something different. And it's the same things that you used to love and enjoy about each other, but now you don't. And the reason is, is because you're carrying donkeys around with you that were never meant to carry. Amen. And if we get rid of those donkeys, then we can bring the passion back. We can yeah. bring the restoration back. We can bring the happy, right? If you're not carrying around the donkeys, you can make a whole lot better decisions in your day, your week, in your life. And I'm going to close with this last scripture right here. Go with me to, uh, Col I think it's, uh, Colossians, yes, Colossians 3, 12. That's scripture. Colossians 3 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, remember, he forgave you of all your sins, so you must do, not maybe do, but you must do, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God 
rule in your hearts. And that's the part that I love right there. Because when I have anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness inside of me, then anger and resentment is ruling my heart. It's ruling my emotions. It's in charge of how I feel. But if I can put love in there and I can let some stuff go, peace now begins to be the ruler. The peace tells my day that it's a good day. My peace tells me that I'm happy. My peace tells all my other emotions have to bow their knees to the peace that is the ruler on the inside of me. And some of you out there, you've been carrying this junk too long. You've had, you've had resentment that's been ruling in your heart. You've had anger and bitterness, and you don't even know why you're mad. You don't even know why you're upset. You don't know why you're not happy. You don't know why you feel tired, why you feel exhausted all the time. It's because you've been carrying around little donkeys around with you way too long. Right. And it's time today that we go through a reset, that we get and herd all those donkeys out. Get them all out of the inside of you. You know when a computer starts running slow and it doesn't work right, oftentimes you got to do a reset on it because it's got a whole bunch of stuff in its memory that is keeping it from doing what it was designed to do. The same thing for you. When you got a whole bunch of junk in your memory, it's holding you back, slowing you down. Man, you used to be able to get happy so fast. You used to be able to smile so quickly. You used to be so friendly. You used to be so outgoing. You used to be a person that people used to love to be around, and it was a slow transition. But you woke up one day, and you were slow at the things that you used to be good at, things you were created to do. You used to have great ideas all the time. Everything in life got slower. Today, we want to do a reset. We want to get rid of all of that junk inside of you, all of those bad memories, everything in you. I want to do a reset with you today. Bow your heads, close your eyes. You got to give me just a few more minutes. Give me just a few more minutes. The last service we did, it was most everybody. Usually is, because this is the enemies. This is where he puts all his time and effort, so don't feel like you're by yourself. This is where he puts his time and efforts. If you're carrying anything around with you, if you got any donkeys whatsoever that you've taken to bed, everybody's got their heads bowed, their eyes closed, nobody's looking around. That's you and you want to reset. I'm going to do a reset today. I want you just to slide your hand up so I can see that. I'm telling you, it's probably every hand in the place nearly. Without thinking about it, I, I want to help you reset right now. I do. It's not embarrassing when everybody does it. And I like it because it's just, it's just a moment that you'll remember. It's, I like to do things like this because, you, you know, oftentimes when we have those moments in life of emotions, it's the ones that brings the biggest change. And I, as I saw just now, most every one of us need that change in our life right now. We need to get rid of those donkeys. And without thinking about it, I want you just to get out of your seat and just come forward and allow me to pray with you right now. Come on, give a hand clap as people, it's gonna be, it's gonna be full up here. Come on, squeeze in tight, come on, bigger hand clap. Come on, if that was you, you wanna reset today, you wanna get rid of those donkeys that have been holding you back, come on, give my hand clap. I want loud, come on, somebody cheer. Somebody get loud in this house. This is a revival that is happening. This is bigger than any change for most of us we've ever had outside of getting saved. Come on, squeeze on in. Squeeze on in. I want everybody that wants to be part of this to be on up here right now because this is Satan's biggest weapon. This is what he's been trying to hold you back with in your life. It is unforgiveness towards a boss that you had seven years ago. It's unforgiveness for an ex who you got divorced with six, seven, nine, ten years ago, or even last year or last week. And you've been, people have been saying, oh, you just need time. No, you don't need time. The sun's been down. It's come up. It's been down. It's come up. I'm not going to carry cancer with me one more moment. I will not have cancer with me one day. He doesn't ever go. I don't sleep with him. Any donkey doesn't get to stay the night with me in my life. And that's got to be the same thing for you. We're going to reset. Squeeze on in. If there's anybody else, we want to give you one more moment. I want this to be a moment in your life that you do not forget. I want to be a changing moment in your life that going forward, I reset every single day. That I don't ever go another day without peace being the ruler. Because if you take the donkey to bed, tomorrow you have a new ruler that's put in place. A new ruler that has overthrown the ruler of peace. That is why we are going to make a commitment as a church today to reset. We're going to make a commitment that every day when I go to bed, in the morning, peace is still going to be ruling my heart. Peace is still going to be over. I'm going to have another happy, joyful day. Wow. Give them a hand clap for coming up. This is just incredible. I do a, a, I try to do a forgiveness uh, teaching often. And you can see it's one of the most important ones because it is the devil's 
biggest weapon. Some of you may have heard this before. That's all right, because this works. In my own life, one of the big things that happened to me when I was uh, about 21 years old, and I found my life, I, I took on, and I didn't even know that I took on a little donkey. Didn't know I did that. And that donkey just grew and grew. And over the next three months, man, I went for the first. I love life. If you know me, I love it. I've always have. But for three months, I even had suicidal thoughts for me. That's a big deal. I, I didn't know what was going on. And all of a sudden, God revealed to me that I had unforgiveness. But I hated this person. I really did. I hated everything about him. And God gave me the secret. And I'm sharing it with you today. The secret was to pray for them. He said, pray for him. I said, I don't want to pray for him. He said, pray for him. I said, but I won't mean it. He said, that's all right. Just pray for him. Pray that she has a good day. Pray that I bless her. I'm like, but I don't want you to. He said, that's all right. Just pray. So I did. I prayed that first night. and It was a very difficult prayer. I prayed the second night. It was still very difficult. I prayed for a week. It got a little easier. After a couple weeks, it got a little easier. About a month, it got a whole lot easier. And I would say probably after three months, I prayed it. And I can remember. I, I can remember where I was at. I know exactly what I was doing when I prayed it. And I went, I mean it. I really do want her blessed. I really do want her. And then it was able, at that moment, a clarity came on because when the donkeys are gone, a clarity came on me that I go, I get why she did it. She had such a bad childhood. She didn't mean to. It's just where she came from. And I actually had some compassion for her and what she went through. And it allowed me to walk through the same thing for you. Is pray for them. They may not deserve it. That's all right. You deserve to be free from the chain of bondage of unforgiveness. Come on, somebody out there. You deserve to be free. Don't allow them to anchor you and hold you back. We're going to pray right now. And when I pray, I want you to see, because the Bible says cast your stuff onto Jesus. I want you to see yourself casting this offense, this donkey, over and say, God, it's up to you. Even, even the Bible says that. It says, you know what? When somebody wrongs you, you don't worry about it. Give it to me. I got it. God's got it. And so that's what I want you to see. I want you to see yourself just giving it away and wiping the slate clean. Going through a reset of your computer and getting rid of the memories because Paul said, I forget those things that are behind and I press forward to the future. God's got great things in your future. God had Holly for me in my future. And I didn't have to wait a whole lot of time. God brought Holly into my life, right? So it didn't matter about the past. I can't allow the past to affect the future. You can't either. That hurt cannot hold you back. That hurt cannot keep you back. Only if you'll allow it. Let's forget the past. Dearly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for everyone that is up here today, Lord. They're coming up here and say, the devil, you get no foothold. I'm going to kick that foot right out of there. That I will have no donkey. I will have no burrow in my life. But I am releasing that hurt and that pain. And I see myself giving it to you, Lord. Giving it to you right now, Lord. And going forward, I have no record of the past. I forget those things that are behind, and I press forward to the future. And every time I have a memory from the past, I'm simply going to remind myself about something amazing up ahead. Until I no longer can think or remember the past, but instead all I can see is up ahead. And so, God, you got better stuff. There is marriages that are being restored that a marriage cannot go forward with donkeys inside of it. But today is a reset. Nothing happened in the past. We are just moving forward in the relationship. We're moving forward. Even when we try to fight with each other, we remind each other, that never happened. Yeah, it did. No, it did. Because we forget those things that are behind. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. Hey, guys. Fine. That's I'll so good. You know what? If you got right some donkeys now, inside of you, you need to let go. Let go of them donkeys in your life. Hey, I need you. I do. Help me get this message all over the world. How do we do that? Just give. Whatever God puts on your heart. Don't ask if, just how much. I want to take this message everywhere. I mean, the world loves me. We can translate. We can do so many things with this message. But we need you to be able to do it. Hey, you have an incredible week. I'll see you next week. Be blessed.